What you see here is a vacuum pump that works without any moving mechanical parts. It is called a vacuum diffusion pump or an oil diffusion pump. In today's video I'm going to explain to you how these pumps work, what their advantages are and what their disadvantages are. This is not my normal style of video. If you're interested in these videos let me know and I can do more of them, for example about different vacuum gauges, but I thought I would try it. With these pumps it is possible to reach pressures of 10 to the power of minus 9 millibars. Of course it depends on the working fluid you're using and the vapor pressure of the working fluid. These pumps basically have two main components. One is the pump housing or the main body and the other one is the jet assembly or stack or sometimes also called Christmas tree because of the shape. The main pump housing has four openings, one here, two here and the large one on the top. And the one on the side neck here is to connect your four line pump to provide a rough vacuum for this pump to work. It is the same case with a turbomolecular pump. These pumps only work when you use a four line pump to get down to a rough vacuum. The two connections here on the side are for cooling water. You can see that there is a cooling jacket around the pump body to cool the pump body down. And the large opening on the top is made for the vacuum chamber or whatever vacuum system you're using. You can use a flange to attach it to your vacuum system. And as you can see, there is nothing inside. It is just a hollow cylinder. And this free space here is to place the jet assembly. It just goes in like this. The way this pump works is that you have a working fluid. Normally it is a specialized silicon oil. Back in the days they used mercury as far as I know. But nowadays I don't know of any application where mercury is still used. Maybe there are some, let me know in the comments. But they use a working fluid a specialized oil with a very low vapor pressure. The vapor pressure has to be low because you don't want any of your working fluid to vaporize under the high vacuum and contaminate your vacuum system. And on the bottom here there is a heater installed. It's currently not um, installed on this pump here but it's just a heating element and it heats the bottom of the pump until the working fluid inside boils and the gaseous oil travels through the jet assembly upwards and is deflected by these cups here. You can also see it on the picture I printed. This here on the bottom is the working fluid and it boils and is redirected by the cups here downwards. So if this is inside the pump body, the oil stream goes downwards and any gas molecules in our vacuum that diffused inside the pump will get um, carried downwards in the pump body. So the impulse gets transferred from our working fluid, our gaseous oil to our gas molecule in the vacuum. And the gas molecules will be carried downwards in the pump body until they can be removed by the backing pump, for example, a rotary vane pump. And that's also the reason why there is a cooling jacket. As you can see here, there are in this case cooling coils because you don't want the pump body to heat up because at some point, if the pump body is hot enough, the oil will just escape through the top and contaminate your vacuum system. So at the walls, the oil condenses, flows down again and can be uh, heated up again to vaporize. So it's a continuous circle and you don't lose any of your working fluid. A disadvantage of these pumps is that the oil will get into your vacuum system. They're not suitable for extremely high purity applications. For hobbyists, that's normally not a problem but in industries they are sometimes not suitable for the application. There is a way to try and mitigate the problem with the oil that gets into your vacuum system and it's these baffle here. These baffles sit on top of the diffusion vacuum pump and as you can see there's also a connector for cooling water and there's a cooling loop inside here that cools this metal piece right here and when the oil molecules have to change direction inside here, they will condense and drip back down. But still, there will be some that make it into your vacuum and contaminate it. You have to be careful with these pumps because you can't let the oil get into contact with oxygen when it's hot. So after using the pump, you have to wait until it cooled down before you shut off the four line pump and introduce oxygen into the system. Otherwise the oil can catch fire and it can also boil over into your vacuum system and contaminate it and you would have to take it apart and clean it thoroughly. The way you would connect one of these to your vacuum system depends on your vacuum system. In my case this baffle right here has a 
flange connector to a K40 flange which I can connect to my vacuum system. Others might just have a ISO flange or a CF flange, it depends on the vacuum pump. But these pumps of course have advantages too. They are basically maintenance free. A total molecular pump needs a controller, it has to be powered by a special circuit and these pumps they just have to get hot. So the heating element is really simple to change if it gets broken and you could basically start a fire under the pump and it would work. Not that I would recommend it, but yeah, they are very simple and there's nothing inside here that can break. You would have to try to break something. The only thing that has to be changed from time to time is the working fluid, the oil at the bottom, especially if it gets into contact with oxygen while it's still hot. Another advantage is that these pumps don't really care about any contamination. So a tow molecular pump will definitely fail catastrophically if a nut or a larger piece of glass falls into them and even small particles like dust can be a problem. A diffusion vacuum pump basically does not care if there's anything that falls inside as long as it's not a substance that reacts with the working fluid. So if a piece of metal or glass falls into the pump it will just get stuck somewhere at the jet assembly or fall to the bottom of the pump and if necessary I can let the pump cool down um, remove the vacuum and just fish out the nut or whatever piece fell in here and if necessary change the working fluid. Another advantage of these pumps is the price. You can get them for very little money. They've gotten a little bit more expensive in the last years but they are still a lot more cheap than a turbo molecular pump. You can get them in all different sizes for different vacuum systems. This one is a very small one, it's almost cute. You can get them as tall as a human and even bigger and yeah they're, they're made for different um, purposes and different sizes of vacuum systems. The working fluid for these pumps can get pretty expensive. It's basically around 50 to 200 dollars per 100 milliliters of silicon oil. I found a seller in Germany that sells 250 milliliters of 705 oil for around 60 euros. So I will try that in a future video. I'm not planning on using this pump in the near future. I may make a demonstration to use it, but I don't have the money to buy the specialized oil right now. And I hope my turbo molecular pump will still keep working for a good amount of time. If it doesn't, I will definitely switch over to this diffusion pump and you will see it in action. There is a video by Ben from Applied Science where he shows his glass diffusion pump and you can see everything working. It's a fascinating video. I recommend watching all of his videos. His channel in general is awesome. And another video I really like is from Cranktown City is the channel name as far as I know. And he is building or built a diffusion pump from scrap metal basically. He collected stainless steel cups um, from thrift stores as far as I know and built his own vacuum diffusion pump. It doesn't work 100% as far as I remember or the pressure didn't get as low but I don't know if he used a proper working fluid. I think he outgassed some silicon oil as that was meant as a lubricant. I don't know what the vapor pressure of these silicon oils is. But yeah, his videos are great too in my opinion and you can check him out. If you like this style of content, let me know in the comments. I know that there are many of my viewers who already know this kind of stuff, but I thought I would make these videos for the people who don't. So I hope you liked the video and thank you a lot for watching.